When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Travel is inherent to all of us. And I think like discovering new destinations, new cultures, new food, um, that's always going to be prevalent regardless of pandemics, regardless of illness, regardless of, you know, what kind of happens in the world. People are genuinely curious about the world. Um, and I think that's something that has definitely been uncovered with, uh, with what we've actually all just went through with the pandemic is that regardless of how crazy the world gets, you know, we're still pretty interested in, uh, in, uh, other cultures and, and other experiences. Um, and I don't foresee that stopping anytime soon. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. If you've been listening to this show for a while, you know that I love to travel. I don't always love the airport, and if I'm going to be honest, I'm a pretty nervous flyer, but I love discovering new places, integrating into new cultures, trying new foods, and just relaxing. I'm also a little bit crazy because I love to do all of the research before a trip. Yep, I am that girl who will go down a travel rabbit hole for sure. I love to play around on a ton of sites and look for the best bang for our buck, but... I know that you might not enjoy doing all that work. Our guest and fellow travel lover, Alex Simon, is the co-founder and CEO of Elude, this cool new app that helps you find the perfect place to travel to on any budget. It's this new concept called budget-first planning. So you pick your budget, then you head to Elude, and it tells you all of the places you can go with that budget. 
In this episode, we explore all the amazing places you can travel to for a $2,000 or less budget, why budget first travel is so revolutionary, and Alex shares some great tips to help you save even more cash on your trip while you're still having a luxury experience. I'm in, and I can't wait to talk all about travel. Are you ready? Let's start talking. We were chatting a little bit before uh, we started the conversation and I shared how much I just love to travel. My husband loves to travel. I know obviously you love to travel and haven't been able to travel in a couple of years. So I've definitely had the travel bug. And, you know, my, my husband and I, like we used to sit around for years and kind of have these dreams about starting a travel based something, but you actually did it. You created a lewd, which we're going to talk about today, but this idea of budget first travel planning, which is really interesting to me. So tell us a little bit more about what is budget first travel planning? What is what does that entail? Yeah, great, great question. So we're at Elude, we're pioneering basically this budget first travel search. Um, and basically what that means is we all know where we can go, right? We, we, we kind of have our laundry list of destinations, whether that's London, Paris, you know, all across Europe or, or someplace in Asia. Um, but it tends to take hours and hours to figure out, you know, where you want to go and what you want to do and, you know, what hotel you're staying at and does that match with your budget? Um, with Elude, basically the way that we look at it is all that we need to know is your dates that you're looking to travel and the budget that you have. Um, and based off of just those two images, Inputs. What we actually showcase is everywhere in the world where you can afford to get to, and that's flight plus hotel. So we kind of take the guesswork out of um, tr- basically planning a trip and um, really, I would say, like urging discovery and inspiration for places that you probably would never even think about to begin with. Um, and so we've been on this journey for, for a little bit, you know, happy to go into some of my, my background as well, but um, traveler at heart, love to get away and, you know, anything possible in terms of uh, trying to get away. Is, is kind of the, the number one priority for me. <laughs> yeah, I always say that I I work to travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that is just, uh, especially when I start traveling again, I, I just uh, like consistently scroll apps. And I actually really, I'm one of those kind of strange people. I love the research part of like coming up with so many different places. We could go here, we could go here, we could do this, you know, and it's exhaustive work, but that's the part I love about it. But I know for so many people, it's it's just a pain, right? It's a pain to sort through all of that and then you get the confusion. And I love what you're saying about uh, with Elude, what what happens with the budget first planning is you're actually curating places that maybe you somebody wouldn't normally think about so you know how is this idea of budget first pl- uh, travel planning like how is this changing how we plan trips yeah great great uh great point so i think you're you're actually one of very few that enjoy the research <laughs> and development i think uh when when trying to plan a trip um most most cases what we're finding is a lot of individuals um they they like the homework kind of being done for them right and so right. in our particular case the way that we do it is um we actually layer in a handful of assumptions actually so we don't put you into like let's say a hostel or you know a two or three star hotel we t- we tend to try to push you into a three or uh, sorry a four or five star hotel um you know non-stop flights basically trying to optimize based on the experience itself mm-hmm. Um, but something that, that you that you bring up, which is definitely top focus for us, is you know what are these destinations that we're actually curating for you? Um, for instance, like we don't necessarily want to be pushing users or uh, you know travelers to destinations that are not you know top quality or, or um, that kind of like aha moment. Um, and what we're finding is uh, most of the destinations right now we have a curated list of around 150, both international and domestic. So um, it's it's fairly versatile and terms of what you'll be able to kind of discover. Uh, But most of them are, you know, trendy places, individuals that, uh, or places that individuals are are actually looking to go to and um, trying to simplify that process of, you know, picking that flight and picking that hotel. And and again, just kind of sending you on your way to to the actual trip. Are you seeing any trends right now of like where people are choosing to go? Kind of just, is it like any interesting data based off of like, 
post COVID versus pre COVID? Yeah. So a few things actually that I think um, come into mind with post COVID versus you know in the current in the current environment. I think a lot of people are a little bit more um, I would say budget conscious than they were before. So right. what we were finding is like you know anywhere between two or three thousand dollars was a, a traditional kind of search. We're seeing that drop a little bit to like fifteen hundred to maybe max two thousand dollars for a trip. Um, and what I think is also really interesting in terms of just search behavior is a lot of people are looking for long weekend trips. Um, so like three or four days, um, you know, and taking off of work, let's say Thursday, Friday, or going into Monday and Tuesday, which before was very uncommon, right? Like many people would take off like a week or two and then kind of plan accordingly. Um, a lot of people are taking those kind of multiple trips throughout the month and, you know, trying to discover new destinations. Um right. We are definitely seeing a trend in terms of like, you know, beach vacations when we're talking about summer months and, um, you know, even to like, you know, Portugal is, a, is, is actually something that's being um, picked quite often. Um, Maui, I think we discussed that a little bit earlier, like that's definitely a hot destination right now. Um, and, you know, even like Kuala Lumpur actually is, is pretty unique. Really? Um, yeah, a lot of people, there, there's a lot of people who are searching and going more into the Southeast Asia than we've seen before. And I think that that's probably due to just popular, you know, destinations like Thailand or, you know, um, Asia that, uh, that kind of speaks a little bit more to that uh, uncommon traveler. Interesting. I think it's it's fascinating when you look at trends and you kind of compare like before and after and you can see some of those kind of unique differences. I think that's so it's so fascinating to me because travel is such a I don't know, it's such like a personal and unique experience. And as you were talking, another thing that kind of came up made me think is there are so many I mean, it's it's a crowded market out there for travel sites and travel apps. Right. I mean, you've got like airline apps, you've got hotels and Airbnbs, and then you've got your Expedias and your kayaks. And I mean, there's just so many different apps out there. So, you know, like thinking about a lewd, like how does this fit into our travel planning? Is it meant to kind of replace all of these apps or is it in tandem with? Yeah, great question. So I think it's a combination. It's definitely in tandem with, in some cases, for for maybe uh, travelers like yourself who like to do a lot of the research and development. Um, but what we're really trying to focus on, and, and I would say, like you know, change the script, is the way that people actually think about travel. Um, so, for instance, a lot of or many people think about travel as you know, I want to go to Paris for these th you know uh, week, or or um, I want to go to London for this amount of time, um, and they just kind of think about it more destination focused. Um, what I think we're really trying to flip the script on and, and encourage is more inspiration and discovery. Um, so I, I'd say most of our uh, most of our findings is like people are really just unaware of how far their dollar could actually take them, right? So they may they may have like that short list of destinations that they're looking to go to. Um, but that, you know, that caps out at like three or four destinations, right? After, after right. that, they're kind of all new. Um, and so we're definitely in kind of the mix of the inspiration and discovery side of planning a trip um, with the goal of, again, kind of getting somebody to actually convert and book their trip with us um, and, and be a little bit different there. It's interesting uh, that you're talking about like the experience and the discovery. Um, I, I did this once and um, I vow to kind of do it again, but I yeah. highly encourage like anybody listening to do this. Uh, this is just kind of a side note, but I actually went with a friend to the airport and I was like, I don't know where we're going, but we're just going to go and like, we're just going to pick a flight at the airport and we're just going to go where <laughs> wherever that is. And there was such a thrill in that discovery piece of of not knowing where I was going. And so I'm thinking that the idea of budget first is that, you know, the, the money variable, like, you know, how much you could spend, but, you know, really encouraging people to to have a sense of discovery again with travel and maybe not go to the places that just normally you would, um, you know, normally everybody else would go to. Exactly. And something too, and I'll actually bring up a few ideas and, and kind of searches that we've seen within the platform. But um, for instance, like if you have, let's say, $1,500 or $2,000 for a week long trip, you might be able to get to Portugal or maybe even Barcelona. But in some cases, you actually can get to like Bora Bora. Um, really? And no yeah, way. 
Yes. And so like the, those type of moments where it's like no way, right? That's kind of what we're focused on, which is like those aha travel moments of saying like, wait, I thought this could be like seven or $10,000, right? How is this, you know, $2,000 or within my price range? And, um, and I think again, comparing and contrasting destinations based on value itself, again, there's always going to be deals. There's always going to be kind of a change in pricing, both on the airlines and the hotels, but that's kind of our job, right? Our job is to package up different trips that really can maximize that experience and showcase to you know the um, the user like wow these are these are real destinations that you can click today and, and kind of uh, again focus on that discovery piece so kind of thinking okay now I'm curious kind of thinking yeah. about that budget of like 1500 to 2000 because that feels it, it's it's a lot but it still feels doable I think um, you know as a travel budget especially if you're gonna take maybe one trip a year so what are maybe some of the other places that um, that that kind of budget could take us? Yeah. So, I mean, when it comes to our destinations that we currently have within the app, I mentioned we have a little over 150 uh, across both domestic and international. So when when you're flying, let's say, uh, let's say from L.A. or New York or some of the hot, you know, the hub spots, um, there's definitely a handful of destinations that you'd be able to go for, let's say, fifteen hundred or, or even a little less than that, like a thousand dollars. Portugal, Barcelona, Denver, Chicago, um, Las Vegas, Maui, um, in some cases like UK, like Wales. Um, what's, what's actually pretty interesting that continues to come up for a, a pretty uh, decent amount for budget is uh, Belize. I don't know if you've, if you've oh, been, um, no. but that's, that's actually been a hot spot of ours. Um, a lot of people are searching and booking. It's, it's quite inexpensive to get there. Um, you know, you can, you can probably even go from LA to Belize for, um, around like 800 or $900. So less than a thousand dollars. Um, and then there's other places like, uh, Lagos or, you know, Virginia. Um, we've also seen a pretty big spike in Greece. Um, that's again, like around the thousand dollar mark. Um, but again, these are like, you know, maybe a handful of destinations that are some of our top kind of short lists. Um, but I would definitely urge, you know, any, any, uh, listener to jump into a dot app, um, you know, do a quick search and see, you know, see basically what your time and money could afford you in uh, in the travel space. Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to rev- rewind just a little bit. So sure. tell me a little bit about like how I know that you were planning a trip and and obviously you didn't have the tools that you needed, which was how you came up with this idea. But I'm sure there's a lot more to this story. So tell me a little bit about like this time period and kind of how you had that light bulb go off. Sure. So my background before starting Elude was in investment banking. So I was over in New York ah, work, okay. working on Wall Street for about five years. Um, I bounced between Morgan Stanley and Deutsche Bank. And um, the lifestyle when you're working in investment banking is fairly high tense, right? So you're constantly working. And if you have three or four days off, I mean, that seems like, you know, 15 day vacation, a three or four day. Um, so literally any time that I had those like pockets or weekend uh, holidays, um, I would always go someplace different. And, you know, it would basically be like, get me the heck out of New York. Let's figure out where I can go. Um, And again, I knew what my budget was and the way that I was kind of searching travel at the time was just based off of that. So, you know, myself and at the time it was my friend, now my co-founder, Frankie, you know, we would sit there, you know, on Google Flights or Skyscanner or Priceline or any one of these literally spent hours trying to back ourselves into the flight and the hotel tell to match up what our budget was and just kind of pulled the trigger. We went to Barcelona for, you know, a few days, Paris for a handful of days, Japan, like, you know, we kind of, um, we lived this type of lifestyle where anytime that we weren't working, we were in another country. Um, And what ended up happening was a lot of our friends, coworkers, and family was like, how the hell are you guys getting to these locations, (laughs) right? We know, we know, we know, traditionally what you guys are making, but like, how are you getting to some of these exotic locations? Um, And that's really what, when the light bulb came out and was like, well, hey, look, we're doing all of this kind of extensive search to to get ourselves here. Maybe other people would be interested in searching just based off of their budget and seeing what that kind of correlated into the travel space. And um, again, you know, a few years later and and kind of like, you know, uh, raising capital in in the venture route and, and kind of scaling the business to an automated state, that's kind of in our current form. Um, But again, in those early days, it was really just about kind of maximizing somebody's budget and and seeing how far they can go. 
Yeah. What was it like uh, launching a travel app or having a travel app like during the pandemic? Yeah. So we launched last August. So about a year, actually, almost down to the day of this recording. Um, and it was definitely in, I would call it kind of dire times in the travel realm. I think people were just starting to come back into um, exploring possibilities. People weren't booking necessarily, but they were, you know, now in the um, in the mindset of, OK, I've been in my location for the last year or two, you know, the same four walls. Let's get, you know, let's get someplace uh, different. Um, when we when we first launched last year, um, we were much more focused on domestic heavy travel. Um, and again, I think that was partly due to a lot of the rules and regulations that were happening globally. Um, but as we kind of rounded out the year last year and going into this year, a lot a lot of people are now more open. And uh, again, if you've been traveling anytime recently, uh, uh, you know, the planes are packed, people are, are traveling um, both international and domestic. And so um, it really did work out perfect in our particular case in terms of timing. Um, we kind of we, we kind of launched the product right at the phase of, um, you know, COVID restrictions being a little bit lessened and people being a little bit more open to the idea of international and domestic travel. So it all goes back to the timing, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> you're like, you're, you have your finger on the go button, but just kind of waiting. <laughs> What's funny is, yeah, we, we were ready back in like April of last year. Um, and you know, that was not the time to, to launch a travel startup. If anything, you know, maybe we can inspire and kind of like, you know, show destinations while people were back at home. But for the most part, people were not really uh, active or looking to actually book until middle or tail end of last year uh, at best, right? And I think like yeah. even now, more people are being a little bit more open-minded to international and domestic travel, um, but it's, it's definitely not to the way that we were, let's say, pre-pandemic. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news... Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. 
They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful, ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. So so tell me a little bit about like what happens if, if you're on a trip or even you're traveling internationally and maybe you get COVID before for the trip or during the trip? Like what happens then? Sure. So yeah, in the current form, I mean, you know, we're talking August 2022 right now. Um, A lot of international and domestic locations will allow you to actually travel pretty freely now. Um, Before August, there was a lot more rules and regulations around uh, having to kind of test before you enter or exit a country. Um, but I think, you know, the, the general perception uh, perception around COVID right now is that, uh, you know, clearly it exists and uh, and people are, are still coming down with it, but it's a little bit more open in terms of being able to, to fly and, and kind of travel internationally. Mm, right, exactly. It's it's an evolving situation. <laughs> yeah, the, the good news is actually, too, a lot of airlines have a lot of rules and restrictions around, um, you know, if you do come down with COVID, there's there's very relaxed uh, cancellation policies as of now. I think that's a good thing that has happened actually since COVID is um, clearly if, if you come down with, with COVID, you don't necessarily want to fly, right, and, and get anybody else sick at that particular point. And so um, they're being a little bit more lenient in terms of cancellations and, and being able to rebook on on the next flight when you're once you're once you're better. So because you are a money person and you also love to travel curious, do you have any tips for us of, of how we could travel maybe a little less expensively but still have a great experience? Yeah, I think, I mean, for me personally, whenever I travel, the one thing that I like to always do is book uh, experiences beforehand. Um, And the reason I I say that actually is that typically it's like two or three times cheaper um, to actually book, you know, and lock in basically an experience once you're there. Um, In some cases, this kind of goes against the whole idea about Allude because we want to encourage spontaneity and and kind of new discovery. Um, But when it comes to the experiences, um, I definitely would urge people to try to book something a little bit earlier. Um, just also too, it gets you a little bit more excited about the actual trip rather than just like, you know, having the bookends of the flight in the hotel and not necessarily knowing what to do. Um, I'm similar to yourself where I love to do a lot more of the research and planning beforehand. And so any type of insight about currency or even, um, you know, uh, apps to download before, um, I know yeah. that that tends to be a really good top of, uh, top of mind, um, just to kind of like get you into the mood of, of, uh, you know, uh, discovering that destination. Yeah, I um, b- before everything was online, I went to Paris, and um, I I'm always in search. Much much like you, we sound like we're very very compatible <laughs> travel partners. Yes, um, I I'm always in search for some like really unique experience because I think that's just what makes travel what travel is. And I found this um, supper club, this kind of like underground oh, supper neat. club that was held in somebody's apartment. They were American, but they had been living in Paris for years and they were working for the brand Sur La Top. So they were cooks sure. and they you had to literally apply, which sounds crazy. But then they invited 12 people from all around the world, strangers to just come in their house and have like this 10 course meal with, you know, the best wow. wine. And I mean, I just thought that was such a, an amazing experience because I would have never been able to have that in Paris, yes. in somebody's, you know, amazing flat with with food cooked and people from all around the world. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that in like a post COVID world, like people are more in search of 
not just doing everything kind of cookie cutter, but really trying to have some of these travel experiences that are unique that, yeah, you go home and you talk to your friends and your family and they're like, wait, how did you do that? <laughs> and and I think uh, you bring up a really good point and I'll use Paris, for example. Um, so like you, you could always go to the Eiffel Tower. Now, mind you, you're probably going to want to get like the skip the line pass beforehand so that you could beat some of the rush. But what I always urge travelers to do is actually look um, during during the time that you're going to be there to see any type of art galleries or, or exhibits or experiences that are actually just kind of like pop-ups in those destinations. Because to your point, those are really those unique kind of custom experiences that not everybody's going to get once they go to Paris, right? And so um, it always try to look for kind of those underground or kind of hidden things. Um, and then uh, again, either book it or in your case, kind of apply beforehand in, in hopes of getting uh, g- getting there. Right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so thinking about Allude and like all of your trips, how do you how do you guys decide as a company like what places to showcase or what trips to showcase? Great question. So there's actually a committee that we have um, and we, we we like to say, like, would we actually go there? That's kind of been our uh, that's been our motto of how we actually uh, find destinations. And then in addition, what you'll also find within Allude um, is every hotel that we uh, that we showcase case is actually hand selected by a team member of ours. Um, And so um, for those 150 uh, destinations that I was describing, uh, we have anywhere between eight to 15 hotels and they all range, right? So in some cases, three, four and five star um, places, depending on your budget and and your timeframes. But each one of those hotels is hand selected and curated by somebody from Allude so that we're not just kind of pushing you to, let's say, an airport hotel or, you know, something that is just kind of budget conscious. It's actually a place that we've looked into um, and would suggest us actually staying there. And so um, when we're talking more high level in the destinations, when we're when we're talking about like the short list that would come up, um, that is also something that's fairly discussed on a, on a regular occurrence here at Allude of like, are these places up and coming? Are they safe? Um, Are they places that we would want to go to? Are they places that we would recommend to our friends or family? Um, That's kind of like the filtering system that we have right now within uh, the destinations that we showcase. Yeah, because I'm always thinking like, you know, you book a a trip somewhere and then you are like so excited about like, this is going to be the most amazing vacation ever. And then you show up. Yeah. And it's, it's a dumpy hotel or um, it is an airport hotel. And you're thinking like, wait a minute, you know, and everybody, what did I just do? Like, (laughs) like, I, Hey, I thought you had this taken care of. I think that's probably, I don't know, maybe I'm projecting here, but I would think that would be like most people's fear that they're spending this money and that, that it's not going towards someplace that is going to be really cool and interesting, even if you do have a smaller budget. Well, and I think that that's, that really is at the heart of Allude is like we want to maximize that budget and showcase the experience that you could really that you could really kind of uncover. Um, and that, that doesn't just start with, you know, start and stop with the airline, right? That is the hotel the experience. Um, what we also like to look into specifically with the hotels is, you know, how close are you to center city? For example, you know, in Paris, I know we keep using that as an example, but, um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a mile outside of the center city, you don't really want to be there. You know, yes, you're in Paris and I'm sure, you know, you're going to get breathtaking views and it might be cheaper, but like, you really want to be in the heart, right? You want to be able to walk around the Parisian streets and, you know, um, you know, get get some food at a local uh, bistro, not like, you know, a few towns over from the main city. And um, that's, again, something that really factors into how we curate the hotels based off the destinations are, um, are these, you know, touristic uh, and, and kind of great locations? And would we actually want to go there? So I'm thinking about the future of travel and I don't know what it's going to look like. What do you think? Like, What do you think is going to evolve over travel the next few years as we all kind of like, you know, dust ourselves off and get out there again? Yeah. Great question. I think there's, uh, there's something that we are kind of betting big on right now. And this is personalization. So I keep kind of hinting at the idea of curation and being a little bit, uh, a little bit more bespoke when we're, when we're talking about creating the packages, But I really think that there's going to be a world that exists in the near future where um, you're going to have kind of your own personalized travel agent. And that's kind of the goal of Allude. Um, You know, you you would come on, you would tell us kind of where you've been, what you're looking for, some ideas in terms of maybe activities, whether that's like 
you know, hiking or beach vacations or just city type uh, hustle and bustle locations. Um, and based off of that information, um, you know, showcasing destinations that really hit and kind of like nail the head um, on on just like what you're looking for and being a little bit more personalized. Um, I think that's what's missing right now, actually, in the travel world. Um, right now, if you go on any other site, it's very um, utilitarian, right? You go in, you purchase your flight, you purchase your hotel, and you're kind of on your way. There's no customization, there's no personalization, and I really think that that's kind of the way of the future when we look at Elude. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. So this is like a purely opinion-based question, but I'm I'm super interested in your thoughts because you are in this industry. Like, like what do you think the travel industry learned or or got right or maybe has done better for travelers since COVID? Yeah, biggest thing is that it's completely resilient um, and that it I think we were describing this uh, a little bit earlier before we jumped on the chat, but Travel is inherent to all of us. And I think like discovering new destinations, new cultures, new food, um, that's always going to be prevalent, regardless of pandemics, regardless of illness, regardless of, you know, what kind of happens in the world. People are genuinely curious about the world. Um, and I think that's something that has definitely been uncovered with, uh, with what we've actually all just went through with the pandemic is that regardless of how crazy the world gets, you know, we're still pretty interested in, uh, in, uh, other cultures and, and other experiences. Um, and I don't foresee that stopping anytime soon. If anything, I, I think um, this actually accelerated some of that and, um, you know, gets people a little bit more saying, okay, look, if I, you know, if, if something were to happen and I do have an illness, I do want to actually see the world. I do want to experience new things um, and encouraging people f- a little bit more on that inspiration. Yeah, I feel like it woke up. I mean, I, yes. I never wanted a pandemic, obviously never wanted somebody to get sick or, or you know, die. Or, I mean, of course, never any of that. But I think for a lot of us, it really just kind of like kind of shook us and woke us up to really thinking about our lives from a different perspective. Exactly. And even down to, I mean, not to get into too much of the weeds, but something that we're continuously seeing is like this work-life balance, right? Like, um, you know, now being a little bit more remote for a lot of these companies, like it gives a lot more flexibility of going and working from Portugal or Bali or, you know, Bora Bora or Chicago, right? Like different destinations are a little bit more easily accessible given that the fact that you don't necessarily need to go into the office every single day. And so there are components of how travel is now now being perceived um, than what it was, let's say, prior to COVID. And, and a lot of that has been accelerated due to that fact. All right, Alex, we have talked a lot about travel and experiences. I And I haven't asked you, but I, I, I need to know. So tell me about some of your favorite, absolutely favorite places to travel to. So I'm a New Yorker at heart. Again, I, I grew up in northern New Jersey. So New York will always have a special place for me. I think if anybody has never been, it's one of those kind of like aha moments where you definitely need to experience it. Um, but I absolutely love Southeast Asia. So Singapore, Thailand, um, you know, Seoul, those are some of like the top destinations for me. Um, I think it's because I love being in just like a completely foreign country. Um, that really, uh, that really like gets me. Um, but if I'm, if I'm looking for just like a quick getaway and maybe like a beach vacation, you know, Hawaii is always great. Um, you know, personally, I, I'm going to Greece in the coming weeks. And so I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to discovering that destination nation too. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've, I'll go anywhere basically. <laughs> <laughs> Are you one of those that you always have your bag packed and like, ready Oh to yeah. Go? <laughs> I got I, my wife jokes around. I have a fire escape bag, but realistically it's just everything that in there that, you know, if I really needed to go on a plane tomorrow or in the next hour, I'm, I'm pretty much set. Yeah. Priorities, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then I, I have one other question. So if there's one place on a lewd that maybe you haven't gone, maybe you haven't traveled before, but, but you, you you dying to go to this place, what would it be? 
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to going uh, to uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. That's actually something that continuously pops up as a really uh, inexpensive destination from LA. So you can get there um, around like four or five hundred dollars round trip. In including your hotel as well for a long weekend. So I think one of these weekends, I'm going to just pull the trigger and just go to Santa Fe. I think that that's uh, something that's that's definitely top of mind. I'm in with Alex on this one. I'm traveling and being curious about the world. It just helps in so many ways. For me, I think travel is just a break from the norm, like a chance to explore, see something new. And I always come home feeling like a richer person. Because remember, being wealthy isn't just about the money you have in your bank account. It's also these experiences you have in life. So even if you have a very small budget, you can use this idea of budget-first planning and find somewhere new to escape to. You can find Alex and Elude on Instagram at Elude or head to Elude, that's E-L-U-D-E dot app, and that will take you to the iOS app if you have an iPhone. If you enjoyed this episode, you're excited about travel, share this with a few friends and family members. And as always, I'd love it if you could go to whatever app you're listening to this episode in now and leave us an honest review for the show. You can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guest as well as our amazing sponsors. And I'll see you here in a few days for a brand new episode.